ready? Yeah! Yay, Matt? Yay, Matt! All right, good. Never gets old. <laughs> okay, so suppose you have the following equation. Please write this one down, and we're going to do this together. All right, try that one. Okay. Who remembers how to add fractions? Mm -hmm. Yes? You find the greatest common factor first. No, almost. Say it um, again. <laughs> yes. Common oh, denominator. denominator. Speak up because I'm proud of you. Be proud of yourself. Okay. <laughs> so what is the greatest common factor in this case? Six. Six. So what do we multiply top and bottom here to get six? Three. 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 Here it comes. Three. Three. What do we multiply top and bottom here to get six? Two. Nothing. 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 Because it's already six. Look oh, up and say two. two. What do we multiply two. top and bottom here? Two. 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 Okay. This can be rewritten as 3x over 6 plus 5 over 6 equals 2x over 6. Okay. And the reason we did this was that now we can remove the 6 by multiplying both sides by 6. Okay, here it comes. 6. 6. What happens when we do this? Who knows? Who knows? Yes. It gets rid of the 6. It gets rid of the 6's. Yes. I would love to get rid of this 666, six, six, both on the thing and in my life. Risky. Risky. <laughs> All right. 6 cancels with these two. Remember, we distribute the 6, and it's gone. Six cancels with this. Doesn't it do anything to the top though? No. Six divided by six is one over one. All right, good question. One, one, one. Good question. Oh, that goes right up. So what's left over here? Three x plus five equals two x. Three x plus five equals two x. <laughs> Write it. Oh, I need that. And then you. Now we saw it. Minus 2x to both sides. Minus 5. No. No. So, so there's, a, there's many ways we can do this. Many ways we can do it. It's plus 5. Right? Minus 5. 3x minus 2x equals negative 5. X equals negative 5. X equals negative 5. Wait, wait. No. Oh. Yes. Yes, it is. You're shaking the whole thing. Wow. All right. Oh, I have a question. Question! I did it a totally different way and I got Speak this. Up. Okay, so we can do it a different way at home, but right now we have time to do it one way. So okay. congratulations. Here's your way. I hope you like it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's do another problem. Uh -huh. I can't do it. I got it. All right. So... To sum up, to sum up, to add fractions, we need a common denominator. To add fractions, we need a common denominator. It's going to happen again for the next three problems. 3x over x minus 5 equals 5 over, oh, 5 over nothing, 1. 5 over 1. The problem will give you 5, okay? So, just write it over 1. Okay? 5 over 1 minus 5 over x minus 5 again. Okay. Same concept. X minus 5 times 5. What would you like the common denominator to be? X minus 5. X minus 5. Coming right up. What do we multiply top and bottom here to create x minus 5? Nothing. Nothing. What do we multiply top and bottom x here? X minus 5. Nothing on that one. Yeah, people at home have the luxury of the pause button. You don't! Oh, no offense. Okay. So, great. Now we have a common denominator. We don't even need to write it again. Is that minus? Yeah. Yeah, x minus 5, x minus 5. Oh, this is minus, yeah. correct. So now, remember what we multiplied by 6 in the previous problem? Multiply x minus 5. Multiply x minus 5 in this problem. Here it comes. In red. 
multiplied both sides by x minus 5. Okay. Yes, if you're wondering at home, you hear chatter about how this is going to be really helpful at home, I agree with it. Thanks for the commentary. Yeah, no problem. Director. Okay. <laughs> so, Wait, here it goes. Jail? Yes. Okay, go. You sure? Yeah. Okay. X minus 5 over X minus 5, we've learned, cancels in this case. X minus 5 distributes to each of the two terms. So when it distributes to here, it cancels. No, it cancels. And then when it distributes here, it cancels. Right? And now we have a manageable problem. What's left on the left side? 3x. 3x. What's remaining on the right side? 5x minus 25 minus 5. All right, so we have a distributive property junkie. <laughs> OK, yes, we distributed 5x minus 25 here. And then we have a remaining minus 5. Cool beans? Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. OK, solve time. A minus 5x. This is negative 30. You know the drill. I'll just do it. You can do it on your paper. All right. Negative 30. By both sides by negative 2. X equals 15. We can check our work. We can check our work. OK. I dropped the mark. I picked it up. <laughs> If x is 15, this will become 45 over uh, 45, and that's 15 minus 5 is 10. That's 45 over 10. That would be 5 minus um, 15 minus 5 is 3, so that's 5 over 3. 5 minus 5 over 3. That's going to work. That's 20. That's, uh, Wait, I'm just checking. Yeah, I'm checking. I'm checking. If we reduce the fraction, it'll work. OK. Very good. Ready for the next? Yeah. Yay! Nah. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. It was just my own world. <laughs> I wake up saying yay. Say Either that or the song that stuck in my head at the time. What? And then I wake Currently, up it's no one, no one. <laughs> Can't get that out of my head, man. OK. Last one. We're going to cut it short. Last one. Hook this up. Boo. OK. I did say boo. Yes. It is a new word I use often. I live in Malibu. I also call it boo. Yeah. Like, you coming down to boo boo? Yeah, when he moves. OK. How I rock. What is? Call me. What is the greatest common factorization? X plus five. X plus five times X plus two. X plus two. Basically. Two X plus ten. I swear. No, 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 no. It's these two times each other, and I'll tell you why. Notice if you have, let's say, a different problem was this. What is the greatest common factor between three and eight? Twenty-four. How do you get twenty-four? You multiply them. So what is the greatest common factor between these two? You multiply them. You multiply them. And that's what we're going to do. So what do we need to do to this to get an x plus 5 in the denominator as well? Multiply it. Top and bottom by x plus 5. All right, let's do that. Multiply top and bottom x plus 5 x plus 5. What do we need to do? Top and bottom here. X plus 2. Close the parentheses. X plus 2. X plus 2. All right, we can remove this. All right, now do you see that they have the same denominators? If they have the same denominators, by now I want to show you that you don't necessarily need to multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator. You can just cancel. Cancel. Okay. 
you know. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Opera, op, opera math, opera. Okay. <laughs> I'm in blue. I'm in red. Okay. So. Wait, can you? Why can you? If we multiply, we multiply both sides by x plus two, x plus five. Just like in the previous problems, we multiply by six on both sides to cancel. No, no, I know, but why can't? Why do you cancel if it's on the bottom? Aren't you only allowed to? Cancel if it's on top. Oh no, I cancel on the bottom because it's as if I multiplied both sides by these so that I can cancel them. Oh, okay. I want to cancel them. Okay. Leaving, look at the previous two problems, we canceled the bottoms. Yeah. That was the idea. Yeah. Distribute! No, X, squared. X, squared. X squared plus 5x. Yeah, but it's over 1 or is it just. Over nothing. <laughs> not no fractions, over that's one, the point. Basically. Yeah. X squared plus 5x, plus 5X equals 6x equals 6x plus, plus 12. 12. Good. Okay. Now, oh, minus 5x. This is a factor. Very good. Factor. Now, we want to bring oh. everything over here. Factor. You have, a, you have a squared and an x and a number. It's time to factor. So we're bringing everything over. All right. Factor. Yes, we need to factor. I'm sure you would see that once I put this all on one side. So, x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. See now that it's factoring? Yeah. All right. All right. That's factoring. All right. It's perfect timing. Here we go. Parentheses, parentheses. Equals 0. All right. What times what's negative 12? And negative. adds to negative one. Negative six. Twelve and one. Negative three and four. Three and four. Oh, Which yeah. one's negative? Which one's positive? Four is negative three plus four. Four is negative three. Four is negative. Four. Four. Four is negative. Four. Yes. <laughs> All right. If you were to foil this out, you would see that it would equal this. So in this case x equals 4, x equals 3. Wait, why does x equal 4 and why does x equal 3? Negative 3. Yeah. x equals 4 because 4 minus 4 is 0, and negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Thank you, class. That was fun. Yay. Have a wonderful life. I will see you in the afterlife. Okay. Goodbye. You can turn off the film. Turn it off. <laughs>